meeting to order at uh, 6.02 because Brian was late. Yes. Um, okay, uh, we do not have Joyce. If she shows up, we'll make our little announcement. Until then, we do not need to have roll call votes. Uh, so, but I will look for a motion to approve minutes from October 24th. Make the motion. Second. We're good. All right. Um, comments from the public on items not listed on the agenda. Yes, ma'am. I have a very brief comment. If you could speak to who yeah. you are. And Marie Hewitt, H-U-E-T. And I have a brief comment. Uh, we have now two very serious applications for the cultivation and the distribution of cannabis in town. One from two local farmers at 149 Christian Lane and the other for distribution on Route 510. So I would like to suggest that perhaps we could have a moratorium on new application until these two very serious ones have been successfully completed. That's all I have to that's, That was my suggestion. That's all. Right. I don't know whether that's our jurisdiction or not. Um, that would be the. I just want to point Miss Hewitt in the right direction for that. Well, I, I, I think we have to take some time to, to research whether that's possible. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think we've been through all our I, I think so. votes. That's long past. Right. And I don't think you can, and because none of our bylaws or, 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 or zoning has a, a cap All right. on the distribution, the cultivation, the, okay. the growth, what have you. I, I, I'm not I sure understand. that, okay. but, you know, I think the more people that we hear about from that, you know, it's something that we have to think about. And you're not a second person in these meetings that has brought up the issue of, hmm, should we tread carefully? So. And both those people are still probably eight months to a year away. That's how long that process will take. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and I do know that the school had a, uh, had a discussion about <clears throat> the Christian Lane, the, the one. The 62 Christian Lane. At 60, I, I, you'll forgive me, I don't know yeah, the numbers, yeah, uh, uh, but um, uh, the, the, the one that's set back, uh, the, the uh, greenhouse that's closer to the school. And, and they've expressed some some concerns around, I guess, the, the, the smell more than anything. Uh, okay. So, uh, but thank you okay, very much. Um, any other public comments? Okay, uh, public hearings. We have two tonight. Uh, the first one is tax classification hearing for fiscal year 2019. This is something that we discuss on an annual basis. Um, we have historically had a one-to-one -one tax classification of the ratio between residential and commercial. Uh, Brian, you want to walk us through the rest, please? Sure. Um, so, this is a time of year where, where we have to decide that question. Um, well, there's really four questions here, and I'll run through them quick. One is uh, whether to adopt a split tax rate or a single tax rate, like you mentioned, the town has historically done has historically adopted a single tax rate. By split tax rate, we mean um, shifting the tax burden from residential, commercial, uh, residential and open space property to CIP, which, which is commercial, industrial, personal property. Um, you can you can shift the burden by certain percentages. It obviously increases the tax burden for each of those categories, depending on how you shift it. Um, the other questions that need to be answered by the board are in terms of um, what's called a, uh, a, an exemption for open space and um, w what that does is it, it, it lessens the tax burden on open space in town when it's classified as open space, but it shifts the burden to residential properties. So we have to make that decision. The other one is uh, residential exemption, and that is that the town can shift the tax burden from from residential properties that are that are the essentially the domicile of 
of the property owner. So essentially you have to live there. Uh, this is typical in towns that have a lot of rentals or vacation houses. And by adopting that exemption, you shift uh, the tax burden to the second homeowners and the rentals. And Whaley doesn't have a lot of those, so I don't know that that makes a lot of sense to do. <clears throat> And the last one is this is a small commercial exemption that the town could adopt and that's to, to shift the tax burden from the the tax burden within the commercial bracket from really small businesses to everybody else within that within that tax classification so typically the traditionally the town has adopted the single tax rate and it has not adopted any of those other exemptions well, under the heading of if it's not broken, don't fix it. Um, I, I think that our tax classification historically works pretty well. Uh, we want to encourage business. We want to encourage fairness and equity. Um, so I don't know about you, Fred, but I'm I'm of the mind to keep the single the single uh, the single rate and not to adopt any of the exemptions that Brian discussed. Yes, I I, I agree, uh, and I think that. Is also the recommendation of the Board of Assessors to, to go along with, with what you're saying as well, one tax rate. Uh, yes, yeah, so I support that. Okay. I will make a motion to uh, adopt the single tax rate as historically uh, exists in Whaley and to not, uh, to not adopt the four sub-items that, that Brian mentioned. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, utility pole placement at 108 River Road in Wayne. This is a Verizon petition. Brian? I think we have a representative from Verizon here. Anybody? Me, yes. All right. What so do we got? This, this is a. This is a a poll petition for to, to install a poll on, on River Road, and I'll let the representative from Verizon fill in the, fill in the details. Fill in the blanks. Uh, my name is Paul Davis, and I'm representing Verizon on your behalf tonight. Um, the petition is in regards to poll T167S E39-84. Um, Eversource requested Verizon to remove the pole to tree guy, which is currently in place now. Um, so we had somebody to go out and take a look at it. Come to find out that the town wants to remove the tree where the guy is in the tree, so they can't move it obviously, or remove it obviously because the pole to tree guy is there. So anyways, um, the petition plan basically is showing the new stub pole that would support the main pole across the street, basically substitute for the tree that's guide to the main pole. So that's what the petition's about, is basically Verizon's petitioning for a stub pole to substitute for the tree that's the main pole is guide to currently. That's it. Has anybody had the abutters been notified of all this? Yeah. And no one's had a beef? I haven't heard from anybody now. So Keith was, I told Keith that the polling was at 6.15, a little bit early, but um, I don't know if he was oh. uh, planning on attending. But I did not realize that. talk about it. This didn't say 6.15, so I just sort of continued on the agenda. Now, is there going to be electricity to that new poll or just a guy wire? Now that's a solely owned Verizon guy wire. So, so yes, the pole will be a solely owned telephone pole. Correct. So no service other than the guy wire. No, no service. anybody. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, butter's been notified, and no one's said anything. I don't yeah. see any reason. I don't know that there's any butters present. Did they? Were they notified of a 615 hearing? Do we need to wait on this? They were notified of this. All right, let's, let's wait three minutes yeah. and continue on with the agenda until, until then. Um, old business, Bloom Market Garden House Community, that's off the agenda for the, for the night? Yeah, they're, they're not able to make it. Okay. Um, I, I did want to just, while we have the time, just fill you in. Um, Joyce and I did have a conversation with them 
with, with Mr. Spagnuolo and Mr. Sokol, and we were discussing the, their proposal to do a flat fee instead of the, the 3% Three percent of wholesale, which we did with Urban Grown, and which we've been pretty comfortable with, and we didn't really see any tremendous benefit for the town to, to change course. In fact, I think if if that facility does really well, at some point we would probably be losing revenue if we went that way. How would we be losing revenue? Well, my suspicion is that. They would offer us a flat fee, and once that once that flat fee hits, once that flat fee is equal to three percent of whatever they wholesale, anything above that amount opportunity cost. Yeah, okay. Is okay, be I got you. Okay. What we lose, yeah. which is good for investors, but it's not so great for <clears throat> for the town. So, I think that they, they've at least stated that they're they're ready to move forward with what we what we're asking for in terms of the the three percent of, of wholesale, and we'll have to find some um, ways to figure out how to calculate that. Why is calculation difficult? Well, they claim to, that they're going to be a, a vertically integrated company, so there's going to be no wholesale transaction yeah. from, from the farm to the retailer. Right. Um, but with the, the Cannabis Control Commission regulations are such that we believe that we'll be able to track amounts that are transferred between locations because they have like what's called seat to sale, there's probably some other term, seat to sale tracking of, of cannabis. So uh, we have to, to figure out what the, what, the, what the wholesale value of that would be. Does the Cannabis Control Commission need to perhaps be kept informed on this? Because they may, this may be something that they haven't thought about in the past or, or no? I, I suspect they haven't. Well, I, I've seen it. I, I've seen it in some of their discussions, but I, in terms of how to deal with vertically integrated companies, but I haven't seen anything that's come close to a solution. I, I think it's probably a good idea. I don't know about you, Fred, but I think it's probably a good idea to keep them informed of of this process because yeah. it may be uncharted territory. It, it would be useful if they could if they would track wholesale costs. Very. And then we could take the average wholesale costs and. Yeah, I mean, and some kind of kind of guidance in terms of how they would administratively do this yeah. um, before we move forward. So, so what are you asking for now, John? Uh, I, I think that we should engage with the Cannabis Control Commission to get their input into this. Yeah. Uh, be, because of the, the, the vertical integration. Oh, and be, okay. Joyce did have a conversation with one of the one of the, the members of the Cannabis Control Commission. And, it was helpful, but not that helpful. With a member or the director? With a member, I believe. <coughs> I could answer that. that. Probably a good idea to vote because the director gets into the weeds probably more than the commissioners do in terms of their 30,000 yeah. foot level. Do we know anybody anywhere else this same investors looking to <coughs> grow marijuana? To find out what they're doing with that, well, we've host agreement for that you, other community. Yeah, we've we've is. we've been researching what other communities have done, and I, I haven't seen too many flat fee arrangements. But even but the same investor, if he's looking at other parts of the state, do we know what he has? The same the same group. Same group, yeah. Um, I, I can certainly look into that. There was, yeah. But the 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 flat fee versus the three percent is really the germane issue here. I don't, it, it, is, it is the way their business model is, is structured. Yeah. Um, and because of the challenge of tracking the wholesale um, part of the business, it, that's important. And, and that would have to be, we, we need to dig a little into that, regardless of whether we do a flat fee or a 3%. And I don't think anyone up here is interested in monkey toying around with, with uh, with the precedent we've set already with with the um, with the host agreement, right. so but we still have to track it accurately. So it's it's that the germaneness is the vertical integration and how that is right. structured. So I, I really do think that 
a little bit more research and discussion has to go. Yeah. Do, do we know if planning board got involved in that? When they I don't, developed a bylaw in the I don't, 3%? I don't see a need for that. I don't, I wouldn't, I don't think so. It's not their jurisdiction. So. Okay. Is that Joyce? Could be. Okay. Okay. I, I agree that yeah, we should look further into it. Before. Yeah. So let's let's yeah. reach out to both. Did did she talk to Jennifer? You don't know. Uh, my. We could ask her in a second. No, is she going to be there? Yeah. But we haven't. We don't have nothing really to prove today because they're not here presenting, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. So well, I'm just, just curious what we have have historically we've done. Right. In something that I would like is I would like them to. Oh, I would recommend to the board that, that we ask them to complete their community outreach meeting before right. the board consider signing. Oh, absolutely. Because re that requires a better notification. Yeah. Have, have they proposed a date for that? Do you know? Not yet, no. Okay. Just if, if uh, they haven't set a date for their uh, community meeting, Brian, to at least coordinate with you on that, so it say it doesn't appear the same night we have our meeting here. Yeah. Uh, that in the location, I, I, I guess, because uh, other ones we've been to, they just randomly pick a location and time and say this is it. But uh, let's, let's bring Joyce up to speed. Joyce, we're talking about. Um, Let's say your, say your. Oh, I gotta say my thing. Yeah, sorry. Um, I don't have the vernacular down pat, okay. uh, but all votes taken because we have um, one member of the select board that's geographically indisposed uh, and out of our collective control. So all votes taken will be by roll call voice vote. Um, Joyce, we were, and then Keith, we'll get back to the poll hearing in a second, okay? Um, Joyce, we were, having a conversation about um, the, 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 the flat fee versus, yeah. And, and yeah. the only question, and I was suggesting that we really need to engage more than you already have with the Cannabis Control Commission um, and their guidance on, on, on the wholesale piece of all this. And I'm wondering, who did you speak with? What commissioner did you speak with? Do you remember? I um, got in touch first with Steve Kulik and asked him who he would recommend to talk to. They have someone whose name I'm uh, just really looking up here on my um, Was it, my was it Flanagan? Time. No, it was, it was not, not an actual commissioner, I don't think. Oh. Um, it was uh, someone, here we go, uh, someone named Matthew uh, Giancola who was, um, let's see, Director of Constituent Services. And I have to say, he was actually very, at first very, you know, he didn't really want to talk to me <laughs> in a way. Um, and he said, well, you know, you, you, we can't negotiate your HCA for you. And um, it, it took a long time for me to convince him that I was not asking him to do that. Um, and I was actually just looking for factual information, you know, about what, um, you know, what, what do you actually do to when you, you know, uh, you know, what kind of reports are people required to file and so on. So he finally did relax at the end. Um, and uh, basically, um, pretty much that, you know, we would be able to have access to, um, the same information that the state gets from these farms. That's the main thing we talked about. Um, so we did not actually talk to a commissioner per se, but um, the commissioners might also be a little wary of, of you know, being involved directly in HCA. I'm not sure why they're so 
wary. Yeah, but this is this is as you pointed out to the constituent services guy. guy th this is not negotiating the HCA. This, this is um, this is better understanding how they're tracking data. So yeah. and 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 so my guess is the guy you talked to before didn't want to talk because and no fault of his he had no idea what he was talking about because this is <laughs> this is this is virgin territory yeah uh, um so <laughs> i'm gonna he had a phone call though yeah he didn't understand that that towns are going to need some information to be able to help confirm what is being reported by companies and by yeah i tend to be an optimist i'm hoping now knowing somebody's in basket who's important and they'll come up with a way to, to help us out would it be helpful for me to introduce you to one of the commissioners? Probably. Okay. Oh. I will introduce you to uh, Commissioner Jennifer Flanagan, who used to be a state senator, um, and has a pretty good sense of at least constituent relations and, and how to address okay. issues like this. Um, and then maybe you can have that conversation with her and at least put it on her, on her radar, because I'm guessing that no one's thought about this at the, at the commission level. Yeah. Because they, they just haven't thought about the, the complexity of, 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 of data tracking. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then Brian, you'll heed Fred's encouragement to make sure that we're aware and that they're not scheduling the yeah, I'll work with them. Cool. community meeting when we're otherwise indisposed. Okay, um, Joyce, we're going to go back to the poll hearing because we started it okay. in your absence, um, okay. and, and Keith wasn't here, so and I don't remember why we needed Keith, but Brian, whether, whether he thinks it's a good idea or not. <clears throat> Basically, the reason for this is there anybody here from a representative from yeah. Verizon? Yeah. Oh, okay. He's just um, so then you've already heard what. What's yeah. going on, and I, I definitely am supportive of it because the silver maple that the anchor is in now is deteriorating. It's got severe rot in it, and recently we had a large limb come down. Didn't do any any damage, but there is definitely very much a lot of potential damage that could be done if it comes down and hits the house that's next there, next door, or does any damage to any vehicles on the road. So the pole that's gonna be placed will get put in place and the tree will be removed. So it's, that's really all it is. Just taking the anchor that's in the tree and replacing it with the pole, the tree will come down. The tree is on town property? Yes, it's in the town's layout. And no one had the foresight to think that silver maple really isn't the strongest tree in the world to begin well, Considering that that anchor has probably been there for all of maybe 50 years, it's or more. It was there at the time, right. and they usually don't do the that kind of anchors anymore. It was common practice on using trees where they could many years ago. I'm just curious, why why is there an anchor in the middle? of the run. Usually it's where you change it's directions. A, it's on a curve. That picture is just a Oh it doesn't that it does not show the curve. That's just a general okay. diagram. It's it's on the uh, curve just north of Straits Road. Right. So the road curves towards the west. Or yeah the if you're if you're north. heading north the road is curving to the west. <laughs> And I assume that pole will be back as far as possible to the right of way line? Five feet from the edge of the road. So how far to the right of way line? I, I don't know. I don't have it's that information. within the, definitely still all on the town layout. Right, but I guess if there's, a, if there's an option to put it closer to the right of way line rather than... Well, the you've got the pole, but then the anchor that holds the pole is going to be further back. So you can't go, you cannot go further back with the pole. And the tree itself is no more than five feet off the road. So it's, there's no benefit of putting the pole back any further. Well, 
I understood there was only going to be a pole, and there's no. Is there going to be an anchor to the yes. pole as well? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that anchor has to be within the town yes. right away. Yep. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you say that before. I just thought of pole. Yeah. That was it. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, Brian, does this require a vote or? It does. It does. I think you have the letters here now. Oh, we do? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just had a quick question. So it, does it sound like, because I live at the, the property there, <laughs> 108 River Road. Are you Marion? Marion, Mar Mar yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just, we had originally talked about an easement because we thought the anchor was going to go into the, my property. But does it sound like now maybe we're able to erect it without it even up going on? I think so. I, I mean, I would double check and I, mm -hmm. can, I can double check again. but. Right, yeah, I know it was a little unclear about where the property lines exactly and uh, by, the, by the edge of the road there. So I just was checking whether this was moving forward with the easement or without the easement. I, I think it needs to move forward, I'll, right? Yeah, I, I will, I can double check that and get back to you with that. Yeah, we, okay. we, we use what we call natural boundaries and in this particular case the grade drops off quite significantly. Yeah. Right. So the anchor is placed right where the grade drops, mm -hmm. thinking that that was somewhat of you know a natural boundary as we call it. So that's where it was placed. Yeah. Um, it's basically right next to the tree stump. Yeah, I did see the markers in the ground. I just didn't know if it, if it needed to be an official easement or yeah. if it was going to be technically on town property. I don't know where your property line is. I, I think the, it's, it's, uh, right. I think probably lines a dart throw. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, just where it is up, uh, up to the edge of the road. I don't know. And you, you're absolutely right. There's that steep drop off right there. And yeah. Well, unless you know where there was markers somewhere along the road, you can check. Right. I don't think there are any markers right now. Okay. Well, in terms of how far back from the road is what I mean. You know what I mean? Because yeah. so that's what we're talking about is how far back the anchor goes. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So okay. does this mean this has to be delayed? Uh, I don't, I would make a recommendation that it um, be approved and I will um, verify that it's all going to be approved based on the fact that it all be in the town's layout. Let me. Okay, would that be okay with you? The pool and the anchor will be in town. Layout. Yeah, and I was I was planning to, to move forward to allow the easement if needed. It's ideal for me if it's not technically an easement on my on my deed. I I'd prefer that, you know. But um, you know, so if it can be not, that's my choice. But right. um, you don't see a problem with that. That's that'd be but hard. I think the tree has to come down, and it sounds like something has to happen with that that wire. So okay, so. Uh, I guess I'll make a motion for simplicity that um, the, the poll be approved uh, under the direction uh, and encouragement of the highway superintendent that um, both the poll and the anchor be wholly placed on town property. Okay, second. Okay, uh, voice vote, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, aye. All right, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, town Hall uh, building policy, Brian, or yeah. I'm looking at the general bid here for... Oh, no, manganese. Man, let's do manganese. Or, that's, oh, please. No, let's just... Which, which one? You pick. We have more people here for the town hall policy. You guys got anywhere to go? <laughs> All right, let's do town hall policy. Um, so, take it away, Brian. Yep. Last time we had met, we were discussing all the public input that we had received. On the original draft of the uh, the town hall policy, and you had asked me to go back and um, revise that draft to address those comments um, best we could and um, present revisions to the policy, and that's what I have included in the packet. 
document has not been put out on the website. At this point, I was waiting for your direction as to whether you wanted that to happen or not. Um, and well, because of the meeting, it is a public document now, so um, it would be available. So I guess whether you want to solicit formal comment on it or not. But just to kind of summarize as some of the changes that were made, um, an effort was made to really simplify it. There were some comments made that the policy was, was too complex, and it kind of, it, it, the document was trying to do too many things in terms of uh, be a policy, but also be an instructional document for users about how to use the building, and it, the suggestion was made that, that we should simplify it and, and clarify it. Um, so that's, that's what you have in front of you. I think parts, I don't know that we need to get into the part about reservations and that type of thing or or inclement weather, but I'm looking at page six here and it talks, we were really trying to talk about user fees and what was appropriate and what wasn't. And I think we could really be all over the map here in terms of <coughs> what we wanted to charge and who we wanted to charge what. Um, what's in front of you is a, is a proposal that that wouldn't charge a user fee to Waitley residents, Waitley-based organizations, Waitley-based nonprofits, or Waitley-based businesses, and that all other people would be charged um, a fee to use the building, 150 for the auditorium for up to four hours, and 75 dollars for the meeting room for up to four hours. Um, I don't know it, what your thoughts are about that. I was really just trying to simplify it. The idea behind not asking for a fee for uh, that category of, of weekly people is that um, they pay taxes in town and they've made contributions to this project through the, uh, through the CPA. And that's um, one way to look at it. So I don't know if you guys have any input on that or want that to be changed or or what have you my only thought is that surrounds uh, if the building is getting tremendous use which is what we want um, it could run up against significantly increased um, custodial services and I haven't seen, and maybe I've just missed it, where the budget line item is for custodial services in that building. I know we've talked about farming out custodial services across various town properties. That being said, um, you know, I, I know we don't charge fees. I'll use Hurley's example. We don't charge fees for, you know, the, the high school. I mean, they pay a an annual sum, but it may not cover the entire, I mean, our custodial fees are much higher because of town use. Um, and so we just want to monitor what the non-charged usage is and what that's doing to our custodial services because that's the unknown cost for my, and also the heating costs. But I guess you could, Start with, with so many hours custodial and see how it turns out. I mean, you, you got to start somewhere, unless you're going to wait six months to hire custodial staff, and I don't think we want to do that. Uh, yeah, that is a cost uh, that could uh, could change once it, if it gets more use. But I, I guess I think these fees are reasonable, Brian. Which you have the hundred fifty dollars for up to four hours. Uh, my only my only question is is that include uh, set up and take down time all inclusive or or is it outside of the four hours? Uh, that's that's good. That point would need to be clarified. Uh, I, I think my intent. Well, I hadn't thought about it, so I don't have any intent. I read it as outside the four hours. Half, so it's a total of five hours. Actually, half hour pre and a half hour post. Okay. Okay, so somebody's there at five o'clock sitting up for a six o'clock event and it goes till 10 and 
they have a half hour to clean up, that's five and a half hours, not four hours. Four hours of event, but the total time that air is, okay, five hours or whatever. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, but I'm not sure we want to be charging people for setup and cleanup time, I mean, especially cleanup time, because we want it done right. And we don't want to, we don't want to provide a detriment or a deterrent, excuse me, um, to, uh, to the proper cleaning up, making sure that they actually turn the heat down, making yeah. sure they turn the lights no, I, on, I, all I, those I'm, kinds of things. I'm not objecting if they don't clean up or set up, but it's, I think it needs to be clear in the policy yeah. if that includes or excludes the set up and take down time. Yeah. And any fraction of, of an hour or a period after four hours would, would be the full, the additional 150. Yeah, because I think at that point, if, if you let somebody go five, then you lose the opportunity for that. For another that. event going on? Yeah. In theory, but, well, I, and I don't know if it, I don't know, I could go either way. Well, we do have a lot of discretion as well. So if someone were to come to us and say, well, I really need five hours, but I can't afford $300, we could adjust the fee. That's, you know, we still have some discretion. And, and part of the, the thing about simplifying it was that, that, you know, we don't really know exactly what, you know, every, you know, user and use is gonna be. Um, and we just really wanted something to get started with. And we can amend this if that becomes, becomes a problem that we really need something that's more flexible, uh, like an hourly rate instead of, uh, a fee for four hours. Then, then we can, you know, we can certainly change it on uh, on an ad hoc basis as we go along. We can also change the policy. Um, yeah, we should certainly put into our calendar to review this um, in yeah. six months or a year. Okay, and, and I guess my other comment: uh, if somebody is scheduling an event, say every Monday. Charging a charging an admission fee, then the the the, the rental fee of one hundred fifty dollars would apply every time they have an event, not just the first time they schedule it for a six month period. Because we're allowing them to schedule up to six months, so you, they could schedule a user fee. Uh, it, it, was your did you say user fee where where something's charged? Yes. So uh, that would be, uh, I guess, that would be my interpretation of it. Again, the board has yep. latitude as to. We could negotiate on, on a to, to per, that. Okay. per basis. Under this policy, yeah. I mean, if someone's going to use it every night for six months, every Monday night for six months, you know, economies of scale kick in. Yeah, and, well. And, and maybe we could cut that cost. I, but I think that's yeah. subject to negotiation. Okay. I, I'm still stuck on this custodial stuff, and I apologize. Yeah. If, I, I can't imagine we're bringing someone in to clean that building every day, to empty the trash every day. Right. If the building is used on a continuous basis, night after night after night, it's very possible, and I'm not saying, and we're not scheduled for that yet, but I, I just do think that, I don't want anyone saying, didn't you guys think about this beforehand? And if somebody is on that third night in a row and the trash cans are full, it, it, it's, it's a disaster waiting to happen. And I, and, I, and I just, I worry that we need to figure that out somehow because it's not fair to someone who's coming in when it's been used three nights in a row and the trash cans are full. And, and, you know, and I get Neil's going to be great, and he's going to go in there and monitor to make sure that things are truly cleaned up. But there's only so much he can do because he's not going to. You know, the transfer station is not open. Right. You know, in, in, unless we have a some kind of a carry in, carry out policy, like you're going on a hike in the Appalachian Trail. But there's got to be a solution. Otherwise, it's it's going to bite us. I think there's an ad in here somewhere, Brian, where they're supposed to clean their trash and recyclables and whatever after the event. And yeah, what which, which you may be talking about that you're probably not expecting them to do is, is mop the bathroom floors and clean the toilets after their event. 
Uh, no, and I'm not worried about that, but. Uh, but I, I think, Brian, it's in here that they're gonna take out the trash and rubbish, and if they see leaves blowing in the door, I assume they're gonna rake up all the leaves that blew in. Why are gonna leave? We're gonna take their own trash out? I didn't read that, I well, apologize. Well, it, it says, yeah. Well, it says uses of the, and we'll get there. Um, uses of the town hall shall remove any waste and recyclables in excess of the available receptacles. So, but that begs the question. Right, but it, it's not in excess, but day, day two, it's in excess, and all of a sudden people are carrying, it, it's just, it's inequity. Right. That's my concern. And I think that's, that's gonna be something that we'll have to keep an eye on as we, as we I agree with something we gotta figure out as, as use increases there. I mean, right now, so we have, we have a, uh, a custodian lie on for six hours a week in in our current operating budget. For how many buildings? What would it be for this one? Uh, maybe we'll need. That's it, right? We're going to gonna have to check on the, keep an eye on the center school. It's not going to um, be much maintenance there. But right, okay, but well, mostly the two buildings you're at. Mostly these, these two buildings. Six yeah. hours, yeah. And, and so then, again, that person has to clean if that person can be responsible for trash pickup. And, I, and I'm not saying they're going to or not. That person is going to have to clean on Tuesdays. Because that's the only time they can take the trash and recyclables away and have a place to put it in this town. Yeah, Tuesday or? No, because Friday, they, what are they gonna do with it? Saturday, they're not gonna, that's not gonna. Friday night, whatever. Yeah, so. Well, what does what the library have for their custodian? Two hours a week? That's their time, two hours a week. They take so. away the trash and everything? I don't know the specifics of what that custodian does. Well, I'm going to encourage okay. maybe that Neil is the, over, is the Lord Protector of, <laughs> of, the, of the building. Really give this some thought. Yeah. I think, like we're, we're we're saying, it's you won't know until some of some of this happens is whether we have adequate maintenance or not, or we need to change our policies on that. And he's the closest one to it. Yeah. Okay. But he is blessed. There's other people in the, in the neighborhood that could see things that maybe are not uh, the way they should be. If they see stuff left all over the yard, I'm sure. Better not be. Neighbors would, would, would call Brian right away and say, hey, they left their trash in the front yard, or all the lights in the building are on, been on, on all night. Uh, I really think it's our case. job to do that. No, but I'm saying if, if neighbors see that, it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. So in terms of so let's look at the next section about water security deposit. Um, so what the, how it's written currently is that there would be a security deposit paid for any events with attendance over 50 people. It'd be a $100 refundable security deposit that the town would hold to um, cover any extraordinary cleaning costs, damage to the building, anything like that. And there's a, there's a provision in here that would allow for the scheduling of multiple events. They would pay a single security deposit up front, and that it would be held um, during the time, or over that time period that those events are scheduled, with the caveat that if it was to ever fall below $100, they would have to um, provide us additional money to make it $100. Um, 50 was, could have been 48, it could be 52. I, I don't, 50 seems a reasonable number there. You want me to keep going? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, the next section would be uh, requir requiring uh, event insurance, and we suggested that it, that it be 75 attendees that they'd be required to get event insurance event insurance. One of the comments we received was in relation to 
inexperience that happens with, with the church in that it's difficult for people to um, get event insurance and to figure out how to get it. And so that's why that number's bumped up a little bit to uh, 75 instead of 50. That's pretty much, that's a standard amount that we ask for, for insurance. And we know that our insurance will not cover this. Our town insurance will not cover this. Cover. The same liability issues that. Well, our insurance will cover, but we would prefer our somebody else's insurance cover. Mm -hmm. Cover any any issues that arise. Um, the next section, availability of town hall. Um, talks about Whitley Town Government meetings, functions, events, and activities shall priority usage of the Town Hall uh, with, with no beginning or end times. Um, it suggests the time that it's available for non-town um, non -town government um, meetings or activities would be between the hours of 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. And it would allow for a half hour period to set up and break down after those times and then a lot of the comments we got and some of the discussion that we had at the last meeting was related to concerns that that the town hall would be used as a inexpensive party venue um, and have some some impacts to the neighborhood so oh what is written here, and this is something I think could be wordsmithed, and I think it's worth discussing, but there's a lot of large private parties in excess of 50 people, including but not limited to banquets, wedding receptions, holiday parties are not allowed at the town hall. We had discussions at the last meeting with trying to focus on the, the more traditional uses of the town hall in terms of the town government and the community groups that have traditionally used it, like the Grange, um, the Historical Society, Snowmobile Club, um, those types of activities are some of the ones that have traditionally taken place at the Town Hall pre-renovations. So, uh, I don't know if we have any, any thoughts about that. I do myself. I don't know if I can go first or go ahead. Go ahead. Go first. Go ahead. I'll let you. I'm nervous about any language that makes it seem like it is a party venue. Um, I think, at least as we're getting off the ground here, um, it's it, we. I would almost um, rather have say, you know, this is. So somehow it implies that this is not a party venue. Um, uh, if you know, the historical society has a meeting in which they are, you know, everyone's dressing up for a holiday, that's a meeting. I don't think that's really a party. Uh, you know, if the town groups are holding a regular meeting and have to do the holidays, I don't think we call that a party. Um, I, I don't think it would really ruffle any feathers for the kind of usage we're looking at to just say, no, we're, we're, no, this is the party place. And I, and I understand that later on the alcohol uh, and other restrictions um, kind of say the same thing, but uh, I'm kind of nervous about, uh, at least in our, in our first year or so, to be, you know, just let's err on the side of caution and we can just say, this is not a party venue. You know, and maybe, maybe it's, you know, it's, it's a matter of, of some other way of words when they get like Brian was saying, but I, I'm kind of nervous about 8.4. But what, if, what if we just took out in excess of 50 people and just say large private parties, including not limited to banquets, are not allowed? And don't set a limit. I mean, if somebody comes to Brian and says they want to uh, birthday party for, for 30 people, okay, that's fine, but if they want uh, a uh, anniversary celebration for say a hundred people. Uh, I, I don't do think we I allow that or not? I don't think I want to have a birthday party of thirty people there. Why not? Honestly, why not? 
like, like, it's like, you know, it's, it's not, it's not really supposed to be a party venue. That's what I'm thinking. At least to, to get started. Well, the, 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 maybe, maybe it depends on, on which room you're talking about. I mean, the mini room will hold up to, we said 35, so I guess you could have a private event there. It's maybe the auditorium where you're going to have your bigger events, your bigger parties. Yep. That. Well, let me. I don't know. I mean, it's all in the definition of, of what you consider a party, and we've talked about yeah. this a little bit before. But let's say, I don't care who it is. Let, let's say, let, let's say, we 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 have. Lynn Sibley's going away party now that she's going anywhere. But I'm just trying to pick someone who everyone knows in the world. And we want to have a going away party for Lynn Sibley. You just made the town hall out of bounds for that because we may have more than 30 people attend that because people are fond of Lynn Sibley. So we've got to be careful of our definitions. Or should it be large private parties? Not for Whateley, the, 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 the Whateley groups here, the, the four categories of Whateley people. Large parties outside of Whateley. Then that would, would, would allow them to have a party there. It would allow you to have, you want a birthday party for your wife there or whatever, or anniversary party. See, I think those are two different things personally. A birthday party for my wife, I get it. But, a, but a, 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 something to honor a long-standing employee or or to commemorate, you know, what happens if, what happens if the 250th, whatever they're calling themselves, yeah. want to throw a fundraiser, and they say, well, the town hall is the perfect venue for that, and it quite possibly could be. Well, any fundraiser worth its salt is going to have more than 30 people, and if you don't have more than 30 people, you throw a lousy fundraiser. So, but John, if, if you limit it to, if you allow these people to have parties, Whaley residents, Whaley based organization. Whaley based nonprofit organization or Whaley based business. Well, yeah, and I'm just saying that, 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 that an individual shouldn't be able to have a birthday party there. They can have a, an event there that, that honors someone, and you know, but I shouldn't be allowed to throw a birthday party for my wife. Well, it's not, that's not the intended use of this place. I, I know other. I, I've been to events like that, not in town halls, but in churches and, and other venues in Franklin County. You can rent a hall to have a birthday party for anybody you want. Yeah, I'm just saying that it shouldn't. Well, if that's what we, if we want to exclude it, I guess that's, a, that's an option. Uh, Well, I'm not sure we have. It's 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 a it's a big deal if if we're going to go down the path of of no alcohol. I I don't see it being widely used anyway. Um, just because those kinds of events, a, you know, a fundraiser. I'll use as the example. There aren't many fundraisers without alcohol. Just they just aren't. Um, and I actually think that alcohol should be allowed. But is it, is it allowed at early? Yeah, under on, 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 under permit, under special permit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and, you know, and, and and I and I actually think that, and we're, I don't mean to jump around on this, but if if you have, let's say, someone wants to put on a production of our town, good play. There's an intermission. The way you make a little bit of money is to serve alcohol. It's not becoming a party place. It's it's what happens at these kinds of events. People have a glass of wine, people have something. Um, <clears throat> so, I, I mean. Well, I don't know, it, it says, how is that worded here by No alcohol at all and no alcohol served? It says no alcohol. No As consumption of alcohol. No consumption. Correct. Like, get, John, get back to, to early, if I understand you need a, spe a permit, a special permit to serve alcohol. If people come there on their own and drink and whatever alcohol, then, then there's no, no, the, the, no problem. The, the, over, the over 50 baseball league, yeah, they're bringing in a 12-pack a, a after right. their game. They right. just are. 
it's not served there. They bring yeah, it. They're, there. They're bring they it bring in. it in their own. So yeah. it is, well, is that a distinction we should make here then? I mean, if, I guess you could have a party there where you hire a bartender and he's serving drinks or people bring their own six pack in and do it on their own. I'm more comfortable having a bartender there because of the liability. Well, I mean, the, the bartender's gonna be served safe. The bartender's gonna, be, you know, have, have the, the credentials. Um, but what if we leave this as as is and, and put out this for a public comment on our website and see what response we get? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The next meeting or two yeah. and see see what comments we get from the from the public whether they feel this is good I, I, or bad. Yeah. Or? I just don't think it's it's you know we didn't use CPA money to let someone have a. A, a, a private gathering to, some, to celebrate somebody's 50th wedding anniversary or whatever. We, we did this for, for, for town and cultural functions. Um, yeah, so, so let's just take the party venue out. That, that would be, that'd be my comment. Not to think about um, good, way, good ways to say that um, such that it doesn't you know, strangle the, the image so that the historical site is still a monthly meeting in which they're celebrating something. Uh, and you don't have to prohibit it as a party. Uh, I'm not trying to say you can't celebrate anything there. Um, but th that I, I think we, we do we do not want to get the reputation of this as a cheap party venue, and we, we never intended that. Right. So. I agree with that. The other thing that, and again, we should put it out on the web, Brian, right away, but yeah. the other thought that I had, going back to the general liability issue, was you're right, we absolutely would like to have people have their own liability policies. That being said, if they do not, we should be very comfortable charging a surcharge because we run the risk if something happens of having our rates go up if if if, if we get a a, a a call against us. So, but if we charge, all right, you don't have your own, but you're going to pay a fee to use ours for for any size event. No, I I I. Uh, for the larger, oh, you mean in, in for the people that you would be charging the 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 the, the what is it the million dollar bodily injury and the and the two million dollar umbrella liability, um, it for those types of events and I guess it's seventy five attendees or more. If you don't have your own, then you're going to pay a surcharge to be allowed to use our. Or, or not allow it at all. Or, they, or not. They don't have a certificate, they don't use it. Well, but yeah, but I'm just trying. That's how it would be. Right. They, and, they would not be able otherwise, to we're in the insurance business. Well, but I don't think we are in the insurance building business. I just think we are making it available for people who don't have that type of capacity. And we're covering ourselves. Our insurance will cover these things, and, and we're and we're. I would check with council. So if we charge somebody five hundred dollars so that we can put them on our policy. I don't know. I don't oh. think that would be. I, I don't think that is because. Well, but they're going to be. They could be covered under our policy if we didn't have it. So it's just it's a, it's. A, well, then you can't charge. Them. Right. I, I guess I don't see the problem with that, but I'm not a lawyer, so. You know, I think so going to councils and. Insurance policies, you can get them online. They're fairly inexpensive, um, a few hundred dollars. At that level? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, who knows whether or not if you were really looking to recover a million dollars, you get it, but um, they're they're fairly inexpensive. We looked into it when we had a wedding at our at our house this summer to see if it was necessary at top. You know, on top of our regular homeowners, yeah, um, and and they're they are fairly inexpensive. I mean, they might be as much as four hundred dollars, but um, they're not exorbitant. Okay, okay. I just threw it out. Yeah. And it is online too. I mean, you can check with your well. That's the dangerous agent. part. It's online. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I went through my insurance agent talking about it. But uh, in the meantime, I will, I also learned even through my insurance agent that you can get these policies online. Okay. 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 Right. Put it out there, Brian. We'll put this out. Um, and then just section nine is rules of usage and conduct. We talked about 
just quickly talks about um, noise should not be kept to a reasonable level. Noise should not amplify sound from within the building. Should not be heard on any property not owned by the town of Waitley. Parking should be in on-site parking should be in marked areas only. No smoking, like all municipal property. As it's written right now, it says no consumption of alcohol. Um, users shall confine their activities to the room that they're uh, that they <coughs> observe. Temporary signage is allowed, but must removed immediately, and it must comply with the zoning. And town hall should be left in orderly condition and essentially leave it as you found it. And then we'll think a little bit more when it talks about users shall remove any waste and recyclables in excess of the available receptacles. That doesn't deal with what's in the receptacles. Then there's uh, part about indemnification liability, reservation of rights. Um, but so it, it's it's a lot shorter and it's meant to address some of the concerns that uh, you did, did a good job on this. Okay, and our uh, winter parking ban would, would apply to this parking lot as well? Yeah. 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 Parking lot. Yes. From 12 and 9 on. Okay. Okay, so we'll put it out. Any other public comment before we put it on the web? I think that my one of my comments is, is away from this whole subject, is, is the parking on the street um, in winter. The parking on Main Street in the winter would be almost no parking. Yeah. But um, that corner is just such a death trap, as you know. And they come out that people come flying on a, a Hayden Mill Road and just scoop into it. And, you know, they're not going to be looking out for extra people or cars or anything. Uh, because we're narrowing the road so much in winter, especially. I mean, you can't pull over that far to park a car. We've done it in the past for town meetings, but they've not been that many people. And um, that whole section from, you know, from the end, we'll say Frankie uh, Skowski's house um, down past, down past uh, Smite's house, as I still call it, you know, that gets really crowded around five o'clock at night, and in all hours of the night. Um, and I'm more concerned about the winter traffic there with people parking on the road. I mean, we've had humongous uh, wakes at the church and people parked on the road legally and safely, but I don't see how that's gonna work in the winter if we have something going on at the town hall that has that many people. What, is, what happens with the, with the Whaley Inn? How is their parking in the winter? Is it overflowing? They very seldom the park on the road. Very seldom. Once in a while, a big the, band, but otherwise. Yeah, very, very, very seldom. I mean, you see a spatter of cars here and there, but we very seldom see. They have the parking lot up front, and they have the parking lot up back, and then they use the town lot. So it, there's very few town parking, and if you've got an event going on at the Whaley Inn, and an event going on at the, at the town hall, you know, we've got to think about that for safety for the traffic. I mean, one thing about Main Street that's so nice about living there, and I think everybody that's been on Main Street is the people that walk there a lot, uh, walk their dogs, walk their babies. You know, they walk up and down the street and all, but you don't see all that much in the winter, but I'm more concerned about pedestrians getting out of their car and getting hit. Yeah, I don't know what the solution is. That's the challenge. Well, unless, unless we try to avoid the times that Waitley Inn is, is busy. That's every night. I mean, they did well, pretty good business last time I checked. Every night, every night. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was being facetious, but it really yeah. yeah. No, it is every night, and it's, yeah. it's a good thing for the Waitley Inn, and, and you know. And for Waitley, for that matter. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think I, as, and I'm speaking for myself, and I can't speak for my son because he's got his own mouth, but. In all the years I've been there, which is 54 years, um, they've never really been a big problem. Right. Right. I find them to be a good neighbors. Right, they're, they're great right neighbors. Before nine o'clock, there's no one there. Right. The the challenge is is that you know you've got a a, a good a normal Whitley in crowd on a Thursday. Every night. Well, I'm just going to use Thursday as, as my example, <laughs> and because Thursday nights might be in a, a night where you have an event mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you have again in, in july uh, you can figure it out but in the winter when i'm not convinced that the parking lot in front of the town hall is going to be fully at full capacity because of snow snow piles 
it, it's it's someone's going to not have a parking place, and it's going to be an issue. We're doubling. We'll be doubling the parking demand. Yeah. yeah. I guess thinking back, they, I think we remember some of these people have been here a long time, is longer than I have. Uh, the biggest event coming up probably is going to be our annual town meeting for 100 or whatever people. And I think I remember, didn't we have them like on a Saturday afternoon or something before? So it wouldn't conflict with, with uh, Waitley and business hours. Saturday afternoon, uh, I don't think uh, the morning, late morning is busy time for Waitley Inn. So, and that's in a winter, well, April time period. Do you remember when they were? Yes, I do. Were they on weekends or? We, we used, they used to have them on a Saturday. On a Saturday, afternoon. yeah. Yeah. Right. But that, you know, that became a problem with people that have families that, and, and you know, right. Jonathan can tell you with his two children and my grandchildren, right. you're running constantly with these children. Right. And so you don't always have, that's just taking more people away from the Wheatley Inn. I mean, from the Wheatley Inn, from the meeting. Um, right, but, but if parking was a real concern at that time, I, or for that event, I guess that's an option to look at. And we also have it at the Wheatley Inn, you have a, a lot of daily parking that, I mean, not constantly, but you have baby showers um, on the weekends. They have a lot of after funeral receptions there in the mornings and things. So I mean, it, it, it's a busy little place. And you know, I'm just talking about having events that are going on at the same time, and that might not even happen. But yeah. I'm concerned about people getting hurt up on the road. We we may need to think about limiting use during the snow months. You know, January, and then there's slow months anyway. Yeah. You know, January, February, March. You know, maybe we need to to limit. Or, or we may have to get um, you know creative. I mean, we 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 just so people out there know, we are that we have a plan and we're asking for money to take care of a lot of the things that you're talking about to um, you know, help get sidewalks and have, help get uh, traffic calming measures, especially coming off of Haydenville Road or coming up Chestnut Plain Road, and and so so, but they're, they're not here now right and these are more on the five to ten year horizon in all likelihood but we do have other places on that road such as the church such as the library such as you know, the other places that could be overflow parking um, for particular events but that might have to be kind of on an event by event basis right you can park a few plate people up at the center school if they're willing to walk back which would be greatly facilitated by better sidewalks just so people know that that's being worked on in and you know, outside of the, the the town hall discussion, and and I I think it might be if there's a big event, we're going to have to use our judgment um, and and get the people who are running the event, you know, in on the plan about parking that they might have to contact say the church and see if the church will let people park there and walk them down home. Does that, does that make sense? It makes sense but people are still going to have to walk in the road at some point. Right. And we are talking about yeah. winter. Yeah. Yeah. That's our in concern winter. is the winter. And yeah. As nice yeah. as the sidewalks might be. I can't find them. Well yeah. yeah. I don't recall a real good shoveling Again, we have to wait, wait to see what, what well, events are. Been, you know, 46 years ago with people that really volunteered. So right. They did their best at that time, but boy, it sure is bad now. But, you know, I, sidewalks are more dangerous than walking in the road, at, actually, at some points. Well, we're, we're looking at addressing that. We have a, a proposal into Mass uh, Highway. Mass cool. DOT to, to upgrade the sidewalk, so we'll see what we... Yeah, but that, but that doesn't take care of the shoveling of the sidewalks. No. I, I, I think we need to um, probably <clears throat> encourage continued conversation of this, unless someone has something that they just are dying to. Well, I, I just, I do have a question, a legal type of question. To the extent that, um, and, and it sounds like you're backing away from this idea of using the town hall as a, an event venue for parties, weddings, things of that sort. 
Um, but to the extent that you are nonetheless still considering uh, using it for revenue um, generating events, concerts or whatever else, um, in my view that appears to be a change of use um, in the nature of making it into a more commercialized venue than just a community um, center far beyond any of the historic uses. So once you develop this proposal or um, a plan for use, um, is it the, the select board's intention to um, follow the procedure because of usage and submit it to the, um, submit it for a special permit? Because as I read the bylaws, that appears to be what ought to happen if the use is changed. I, I'll speak for myself. I hadn't thought that far ahead. Okay. Um, my vision for this has always been a place where we could have cultural events, um, which is no different than what has happened over the years there with school concerts and, 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 and other things. Um, but I don't think people charge $20, for instance, to get in. No, pro probably not. I, and, I, and again, and I my would, understanding of the proposal right. is that that could be open to groups from outside of Waverly. So if somebody decides they want to do, you're talking about a six month every Monday, for instance, event. Um, perhaps somebody that has a concert every single uh, Monday for six months who charges 20 or 25. Watermelon Wednesdays is a good example. I mean, they're, they charge a pretty hefty amount of money for people to come in. Uh, but it's a commercial venture and that's not benefiting Waitley in any way. And it's um, a change of use for the chapel. Absolutely. Um, but but that's my that's my example, just whether or not uh, you are cognizant of the fact that it could be it does appear to me at least to be a change of use. Um, well, I, that's that may I have to submit it. <coughs> it may have to be submitted right. for a special permit. And it's where I would lean on town council. Yes, my recommendation would be that now the board would seek an opinion from town council as to how to proceed, if right. that's if that's a, a desire. Right. Yep. And that could be an option, just no uh, no events that charge an admission fee. Right. And, kind of fee, so. and I'll admit, my concern is that we spend a lot of blood, sweat, and tears and money on this building. And my biggest fear is that this building doesn't get used. And every time you put a restriction on it because of change of use or because of whatever reason, good, bad, or indifferent, you restrict the usage and then it becomes this building that was preserved for why? And I want to, and I think we all want to avoid that. So I, I just think that in that kind of situation, I think the town would need to sit down, dare I say, over a beer, and really have a nice conversation about how to how to how to how to work together and figure figure it out. So, can I ask for clarification on the smoking policy? How how it reads now? Sure. Yeah. What's oh. it say? Yeah. What does it say? Sure, sure I'll clarify for you. <laughs> What's it say? It currently says smoking of tobacco and the use of illegal substances in the town hall and on town hall property is strictly prohibited. Okay, so on town hall property, so it includes in the back parking lot or wherever. Yes. Okay, and that'll be put, that's posted somewhere, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's posted within the building now. I don't know that it's posted. What it tends to happen is people know that they can't inside, but they might want to wander outside at break time and. Those kinds of postings should happen on yeah. all over town, a variety of town properties. Yeah, yeah. I think it should be very obvious just because. Anybody else? Tell your neighbors, tell your friends. Comments I are welcome. One more question. Yeah. Um, as in the butter, if something does seem to be happening that is out of sorts or out of policy, who do we call? What do we do? Call the town? Well, I'm yeah. not, I don't want to wake up Brian at 9 o'clock because there's a, you know, an event going on that's kind of reached. I can hear it. 
because the policy says we're not supposed to hear it. So who do we call in the event that we, whatever it is, is upsetting or? Um, well, the new one, if it's a noise issue, I know when I hear, of course I've never done this, but if I've heard neighbors who are being a bit loud, I, I'd call the police. Yeah, call the police. Okay, if that's what's acceptable, I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah, police are police, or even state police, whoever comes. Right. And then they'll evaluate whether you had grounds or whether you were dreaming. <laughs> That's what I would say. And then Neil. Yeah, I don't want to wake Brian up. I don't think anybody wants to wake Brian up. Um, one other thing, just about posting on the website, I will say that when you had the first um, proposal, um, I'd venture to say almost nobody other than people in the immediate know had any idea it was out there. I happened to learn about it and alerted a bunch of people, but it took me a long time to find it on the website. It was really pretty obscurely um, placed. So it should have been on the, the front page under the news section. No, I had a really hard time finding it. Uh, and so I actually printed it out and gave it to people because other people couldn't find it either. But uh, I really think that for real transparency purposes, you need to be doing a better job of letting people in town know what's, that the fact that there is this proposal, because lots of people just don't even have a clue, uh, much less where to find it. So I, I know that there's not a legal requirement probably that you do more than you are, but I think it would be uh, wonderful if one could at least go to the website and find it easily. Um, but I, I truly, I had to, and I, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty good with the computer, I'll, but I'll to it took me quite a while to find it. Uh, okay. was, was it, it will be on the front page. Was it posted? Under the news section. Because it, after. it, admittedly, it amazes me how many people, no, Joyce, do not take offense at this. <laughs> it amazes me how many people watch community television. And they watch the scrolling stuff about the transfer station hour. You know, I want to make sure that we are posting that you should go to the website and it's above the page and it's where is the tab and because we should be maximizing, you know, putting up a flyer at the transfer station, community television, um, at the, at the school when people are picking up. You know, no one uses the bus these days. They all pick up and drop off their children for whatever reason. Um, so maximize that. Can I poke in here real quick? Sure. Um, and, and just ask, would, I mean, uh, I think the posting on the front page of the website is something that's easy to take care of. But, I mean, would that have helped you find it when you were having... I'd like to, to, to get the word out to let people know that it exists who want to know. We can have some suggestions more concretely other than calling every household. I mean, we can robocall every time we have a policy, I suppose. What would be a good way, do you think, to get that word out? I'm not a web designer, so I don't know how to do that, but I'm just, my point was that I was made aware of the fact that there was a proposal that I could find it on the Whateley website. I went oh. and I looked through the, um, directory to try to figure out where it was. I eventually, I think I even went to select board. I don't even think it was, wherever it was, it really took me quite a while to find it. Yeah. So when you say put yeah. it on the front yeah, page. Yeah, the signs on the screen when I go to the website. There is a bunch of stuff posted on the front page, but all of it, usually the first or maybe the second item are visible and you have to scroll down to see them. So, so I, uh, I understand that something could be right on the front page and then get get missed yes. um, like that. So I, I don't know how to solve that problem either. <laughs> so, so I, but I just wanted to ask because uh, often that's how we get good solutions. Yes, it will. It will be under the the news and announcement section that's in the middle of the page, and um, we're looking into redesigning the the, uh, the front page of the website. We've had some discussions about how I don't think it's user friendly. And we have a, a, a quote from a web designer. Um, but it will be under the news and announcement section. There'll be a link that you can just click on. And it'll come when? Up. Um, Take a few days. Five minutes after the meeting, probably, tonight. 
Go go home, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I could say it doesn't take much to post that you post it on the website, so I could say that it wasn't a scoop, Joyce, that we were developing a user policy and people will stay tuned and see our website. I mean, the, the policy itself was not in a scoop, but there was a, That's right. a, a reference to it that we were looking at it. So we, yeah. we could also, um, I, I do know a little bit about this. We could post it on the, a link on the Friends of Town Hall Facebook page. Um, there are a number of other ways to direct people to the, the, the specific page on our website other than people finding it on having to search our website itself. But bear in mind there's lots of people who don't use computers. Oh, I, I get it, but that's not gonna, but the, but the, yeah. but the homepage isn't gonna help them either. Sure. Exactly. Uh, I'm just trying to maximize um, can I do so much and it's, you're still going to miss well, I don't disagree with you in that regard, but I just think it's, it's like, you say Facebook, but there's lots of people who don't use yeah. that and they don't use computers. Right, so. I'm just, again, it's... Sure. I mean, the scoop is a good way. Yeah. Because people, I think, look at that. The time. I, I, I'd like to see data on that, but maybe. <laughs> um. Joyce, it's okay. No, I'm not. I'm not picking on Joyce. I'm just, you know, everyone has their different methods of sure. gaining yeah. news. You know, um, I was in a I was in a, a focus group the other day, and someone said, "Oh yeah, just go to the New Yorker for for up to date." And I was like, "Who reads that anymore?" You know, so everyone has, the, <laughs> but everyone has their modus operandi of of of, of getting information. So that's. That's probably nothing. Nothing new. I, I, I guess we have other public meetings advertised in the paper, even on our website, and we get fewer people in there here tonight at the meetings. And you think they'd have an interest in it? And all the marijuana stuff that's going on, all the, the solar farm issues mm -hmm. going on, very few people come. Now maybe they wait to view it online or, or read it about in the paper. If there's a reporter here, they, they get some information, but. I think that's kind of a, a general comment I could say that is, or not a, not a comment, a general concern I have. How do you get more people involved? How do you get them to come to meetings to express if they have a concern? Does it mean if they're not here, if you don't hear from them, everything's fine? I, I guess that's kind of how I guess we proceed. I, I guess you're going to do so much to get them here. Unless you offer them something to come here. We haven't tried that yet, but. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, I, I am going to cut this off now because it's okay. been a long agenda. Item. Uh, but we will maximize our visibility of um, this draft on the web, um, and I encourage everyone to to take a look and as as I will. So. I think the library's um, craft fair is going to be the first large use. On December 2nd um, we expect many people so maybe it's, it'll be a good test of how things go and you know they're going to do the craft fair at the town hall yeah oh yeah okay. it's been in the basement and on the first floor of the library and moved it to the town hall because it's accessible yeah and hopefully it'll draw more people to look at local crafts and you know enjoy the start of the holiday so we'll see how it goes okay all right, thank you everybody for input. You guys aren't leaving now. <laughs> <laughs> They're not on town water, so. But we've got a plethora of fun stuff to talk about. I know. We'll, we'll, we'll leave you alone, John. Yeah. I don't think we don't Bye, Brian. Bye, Freddie. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. All right. Uh, Else, Manganese filtration project. You guys wish you gave a different answer, huh? Which <laughs> one? went first? Thanks for your patience, you guys. Thank you. All right, Brian, take it away. The long-awaited manganese filtration project. You recall the the first round of bids that the water commissioners received was beyond the available funding. But it has 
that the town had authorized through the Clean Water Trust Fund. Um, the bids for that ranged from the probably what two hundred thousand dollars spread between the low and high. Um, so, and what was the low? The low at that point was four fifty-eight. I think four fifty-eight. Um, so the idea was to reduce the scope of the project and rebid with the idea that we would get lower uh, bids back. And we rebid the project. We received one bid, um, and it was only about sixty thousand dollars less, probably. It was uh, three ninety-eight. Um, so we're kind of at a point where, well, we need to figure out what to do. And I think the water commissioners had, um, well, you guys can tell me, you guys had voted to move forward with the project, right? Despite our reservations about costs. Um, and we voted it in, in front of Mass DEP. And you recall Mass DEP is essentially the reason why this is being done because the town is being ordered to do it um, to reduce the levels yeah. of manganese in the water. And they recommended that we probably should have even a little bit more money than we do for, um, for this project. Because um, the, the town should be entering into a, um, a service agreement with the engineer to, to do the, really the project oversight and they also mass DP also suggests that we that we carry a five percent contingency. Uh, they so require that, that or they encourage that? Uh, I don't remember what the wording was. Well um, could you remind me how much is the gap in funding uh, say if this bid were the one we were to select? Um, what is how far over are they? Because that's not in my packet. Well, yeah, I emailed that to you separately. I, I pulled this together um, in the waning minutes before the meeting. It would be around oh, okay. you know, around sixteen thousand. Oh, I see that. Okay, that, right? I see the uh, email now. Yeah. The different how much we would need. Another third. I don't know why. What did you say, George? One spot. We need another thirty thousand. Right. And so you have and you have about twelve. Right. Mini operating budget that could be put towards yeah. that. Right. So you. you would need another sixteen to eighteen thousand um, dollars. What do you guys have in your reserves again? Well, they have just over seventy thousand retained earnings. Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Um, so there's a couple ways that 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 additional funds could be appropriated. One is that. <coughs> The town can authorize additional borrowing through the Clean Water Trust. So right now, it's the town authorized four hundred ten thousand dollars. If we were to go back to special town meeting, we could amend that article to request, let's say, what would we need four forty, um, and that money could be borrowed from the Clean Water Trust. Like you mentioned, we could put some of the if the. If the water commissioners wanted to, they could put um, some retained earnings towards that. Um, or there's a couple other articles you might be able to repurpose. Um, but for there's one there's one article for a generator, but you might want to hold on to that money. Um, so so at this point, we're kind of in a spot where if this is going to go forward now with this company, the, the, you're going to need more money. And it's probably going to take, um, I, I don't like to say these words, but it's probably going to take a special town meeting, fortunately we had one a little while ago, um, to appropriate the additional funds. How long is the bid good for? We asked them to hold it for 30 days. And it was... 26, 26, 8. 20, it was submitted on the 26th. Now the, the oversight agreement, is that with the contractor that does it? Or is that somebody that 
the town needs to hire to do the oversight? The engineer. The engineer. The engineer, the engineer that designed the project yes. now is, is asking for 20000 as oversight. It's required by Mass Deal. Uh, it's required by Mass DEP that an engineer do similar to what Jones Woodset was doing okay. with us for the town hall building, signing the pay requisitions and overseeing the project. But for that, we got it as design. It was all together, one, one contract or project design and oversight. But well, I think we, we had a separate contact, contract for Jones Woodset for the administration, though. But that was not included in your design. Was two contracts. There's two separate contracts from the beginning. And, and is this a, a flat fee or is this hourly up to this amount? Or how is what is it was just a flat fee? A flat fee 20, for the, the twenty thousand. So really well the contingency I guess you don't know whether you're gonna spend that or not. But the contingency, no. No, you, so what you do know is the 398 and the, the oversight, the 20, so you're what, 3, you're 4, 18? That is a minimum you need, assuming no, no contingencies. You know yourself going through the town hall project where a lot of stuff pops yeah. up that you yeah. can't anticipate. Well, are you, let me ask, are you, are you comfortable with the 5% or comfortable with the need for a contingency? Do you think yes. there is? So this can depend on the on type of work you're doing. They're doing as well. And I think that we should have the contingency. Okay. Um, well, how soon can we have a special town meeting? Well, the the other option is if you do uh, early December, maybe. If you do retain, retain earnings is what you have in the uh, enterprise fund, right? So free cash, it's the equivalent of free, free cash, cash in the enterprise but fund. Do we, do we need a special town meeting to use that money? Yeah, yes. We do? Yeah. Are you guys opposed to using that? We thought about it, but after we talked to Brian, uh, you'd have to have a special town meeting to use that money. Right. So we can get money through the grant, I think, for 2%. Well, the, yeah, the Clean Water Trust funds is 2% loan. Um, and the way it works is you don't borrow the... Uh, essentially, what, what happens is that the, the contractor will submit a requisition for the cost for, let's say, the month. And then we'll submit that to MassDEP, and MassDEP will approve it, mm -hmm. and then the money will be paid from the Clean Water Trust directly to directly to the contractor, and then at the end of that process, um, we'll have the permanent financing of whatever that amount was at two percent. At two percent over how many years? Um, what's it, it can be spread out over thirty years. Really? Yeah. Is that is that what the intention is to use thirty years? Um, it'll probably take a Hopefully not, but probably. Okay. Now, did, did you say Mass DP is requiring you to have the contingency? Yes. And they're recommending. They it. recommend it strongly. Because yeah. I, I guess you could, you could go with a, a lesser <coughs> contingency amount to, to uh, say the the four. What do you need? Four thousand or, or three thousand? No. 422 so you could come up with uh, two or three thousand contingency amount today and then increase that amount if you need it at a special town meeting because it, it depends on, I'm looking at the you know the, the town hall contract we, we had okay we had money for contingencies but they weren't approved until Till later date, till they propose a cost, and we approved it. We had money, so so if you only have say four thousand in contingencies, and you don't get any contingencies for a month or two, then it's I guess month, you right? have enough money. If if, the if they, uh, it shouldn't take. Yeah, I wouldn't say it wouldn't take no more than a month to finish it. To finish it, but but the. the if it exceeds the uh, a smaller contingency amount, 
we can still have a special town meeting to increase that. I, I, I guess why increase so it now? Is you say you have two town meetings? No, no, you have enough now to go with the what two thousand contingency instead of the no, you still, no, you still got to go short to twenty. You still got to do the oversight agreement piece. No, so. with that. You get before at four twenty, and you have four ten. Four twenty two. Right, but we only have the town only approved four ten. Right, but you have uh, on your operating budget. You have twelve thousand. Is that available right. to use? Yes. Okay, so you have four twenty two today available. The four ten and the twelve, right? Yeah, I guess so. You look at it that way. Yeah. So four twenty two. So that that gives you uh, uh, what four thousand for contingency today without asking for any more money using your operating budget. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm saying is. If we could go with that, you don't need special town meeting. We could prove that today with 4,000 contingency to 20,000 oversight. If you have enough to 422 to cover all that. And we just wait to see if you need additional contingency in the next month or two. If you do need that, well, come back to us and we'll have a special town meeting to prove that. I, I, I get the concept, but I worry about the timeline because how long is the whole project gonna, gonna take start to finish? It's hard to say with the winter coming up. If they get right on it now and get the foundation in, they can get the building, and then it's all interior work after that. So it's several so, months. Yeah, they got it. You have another three weeks of working outside. Yeah. Uh, so, till January, maybe. Oh, wow. So, but would we have that calendar cushion under that under your concept to? To, to scramble for a town meeting before we needed to request the additional funds or, or if there's a contingency need, is it needed like that that moment, that snapshot? I mean, time. we would have close to a three week, uh, uh, the, the town can't enter into contracts that it doesn't have money appropriated for. So if we were in, in, the, in the middle of the project and there was a contingency that came up let's say over that amount, we couldn't sign that, we couldn't sign that change order. Right. Um, and that would probably probably take about three weeks. So you right, still before have we to. get a special town meeting, yeah. before I get the warrant to you guys, you have a meeting, but and we advertise it for two weeks, probably three or four I, maybe, weeks. Maybe I don't get something, but I'm missing the political challenge. Other than scheduling it for a special town meeting, I don't see this as a heavy lift at special town meeting. Especially if you say, and if we don't need the contingency, we're not going to use it. Yeah, it doesn't get used. It just doesn't get used, so you're not increasing your borrowing. I, I don't. I don't see the lift other than yeah, we got to come here and hang out with five people who show up for a special town meeting. Yeah, I, it, it's just a clarifying question. My understanding is that um, there's some, like two possible ways to handle this need for the sixteen thousand dollars. One is to increase the borrowing, which requires to vote at a special town meeting, or uh, to uh, appropriate it out of your uh, free cash or the equivalent of free cash, which requires a vote of special town meeting. So it sounds to me like we should get a special town meeting going like yesterday, if, or where we're going to that we can push. And the decision really should be between whether you uh, authorize a little more borrowing or whether you authorize the use of your uh, free cash. That doesn't seem to be, I, I think Brian is completely right. We can't really, I, I would love to find a way to get the thing started earlier in the week and schedule a special town meeting. But we might not be able to do that legally. Um, if there is a way to accelerate it, I'd be all in favor of that because I understand that, you know, the, we may use up your three weeks of being able to pour a foundation just trying to have a special town meeting. Um, that's, I think that's the, that's the, the conundrum, but we should just get a special meeting going because we got to we'll decide which way to try and do it with increased borrowing or, or appropriation, but that's a no-brainer. I agree with Joyce. Let's just get it done. The problem is scheduling the town meeting. I, I guess in a, if we were to, to do that, I guess I'd ask if you're sure the, the 5% is going to be enough. I mean, should you ask for thirty thousand instead of twenty? I mean, it's not like you're going to spend it, but 
the void uh, it's there if you need it if you need it yeah mm -hmm. the borrowing authorization could be 450 475 if we don't use it it's yeah it's not people, sure people get scared of bigger numbers that's my only concern <laughs> you know let, let's just not let's let's be let's be cautious but let's not be stupid at the same time because we don't want to go that high is if we went that high we would have kept not rebid it right <laughs> um how quickly can we do a special i gotta talk with lynn and we got two weeks three weeks like it's probably two or three, well it'll at least be three weeks maybe four so we can't sign a contract until then we should have conversations with and that means they can't we that means the project doesn't start until next spring we should have conversations with mass dp about, about that okay that if we that if we show them we're moving things along and issues with winter and digging they may at least cut us enough, cut us enough slack you think they will that, do we have <clears throat> we have enough we have authorization to borrow four hundred ten thousand dollars, so we could legally enter into that contract for three hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars. Okay. Let's work with DEP. Um, it's not like we have any any seniority in our legislative delegation, or people who are actually, you know, I, I would I would get Kulik in the loop on this. Is he done now? No, he's yeah. still there until January 1st. Okay. And if they told you you can't pour concrete after a certain date? No, you can't pour it. You can pour it in the middle of the winter, but it costs you twice as much money because you've got to heat the ground or you've got to heat the forms. Yeah. All right, let's 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 start this process, talk to the DEP, get the town meeting scheduled, and uh, engage with uh, Steve Kulik's office. All right. Um, wasn't but I'm with you guys. I'm I'm all for borrowing more. The other question: If the selectmen had to sign the contract, um, they don't have to sign it, but whether the board should approve it, um, whether you want to approve the bid. Well, we're not going to rebid. We've learned that lesson. This is about as cheap as it's going to get. So why wouldn't we? So the water, the, the water printer's already approved it. Um, it's not really clear at this point who needs to approve it, but if both of us approve it, then it's safer that way. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the bid from Dankris. Dankris Builders Corporation. I'll second. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Me, aye. Nothing's ever easy. All right, you guys. Hopefully we can get a hold of them tomorrow. Yeah. Hang on. Dan said he'd do, do the digging for free. <laughs> Dan will do the digging for free. Yeah. All right. Um, MDI. MDI grant. Uh, there's a narrative in your packet. Uh, essentially, this is a, a grant application we're seeking um, a consultant to work with a committee who would try to work on some um, wayfinding that could be uh, implemented in town to help people who are passing through town know of the great establishments we have in town and the great places in town and get people to support those places, visit those places. Um, this would be a grant of service so the town would, um, well, a consultant would be assigned from from um, I forget who it is one state agency um, to help the town um, with that. So it's a it's a grant of services. Okay. There's no cost to the town. There's no cost to the town. Well, other than the the part. who wrote this, by the way? Um, no, I, I start. Uh, Jessica Atwood started it, and then I. Edited it. You like Wes Whiteley in there? No, 1526, <laughs> huh? Yeah. We have 1526 in a dog's age. Yeah. It's 1526. Huh? 
What do you see? Population. 15, 15, 15. Population. Oh. But the Western, the Western. But, but you know what? If you want to keep using that 1970 census, you know that's. <laughs> the Western portion of Whateley mostly undeveloped. Where do they get that? With hills, brooks, and forests. What's Whateley? You live there. That, that's probably You're undeveloped. Huh? That's pretty accurate. That's accurate. Well, I think that's accurate. I wrote that. That's my. That's, that's very accurate. accurate. There's 100 acres behind me. Right. <laughs> and it's not developable. So, oh, well, I wouldn't say that. It's just undeveloped. But there's a lot of stuff behind, you know, the, behind, you know, the old Kennedy property. That's tough to yep. develop. I won't say that that this is written to. I'm just giving you a hard time. Embellish um, things, but we're trying to sell it. So. All right. Do we need to make a motion? Well, I, I have some oh. questions here. Uh, Okay, once we go through this, there, supposedly this is asking for a project committee. Yep. And they're going to figure out what signs need to be done, or what signs need to be uh, developed and put up. And it's going right. to be the town's responsibility to pay for the signs. If we choose to go. If we choose. Go with it, yeah. And, and these signs that they, they talk about are the through routes that go through Waitley, I-91 and... and State Road 5 and 10. Yep. We'd have to get creative with the state roads, I agree. Do we have jurisdiction to put signs up on 5 and 10? 91, I, I know we do not. Nope, we don't. And 5 and 10, we, we don't. But we could ask. We could ask. Uh, we could take, I, I guess... Do we consider easements on I think property? The, well, right, but, but right now... Out of the right of way. Any businesses that want the signs on 5 and 10, I guess it would apply to the state, and the state grants them that approval to do that. Uh, I, I guess I'd hate to go through this exercise and, and come up with a bunch of signs and, and well, we can't put them on I-91, but to put them on Route 5 and 10, I, I, we have a few there today. I, I don't know what else you, you think you're going to put up there. Uh, but what's the downside? No, so we don't have any skin in the game except for people, somebody's time, and I'm going to volunteer to well, be the town official. The, 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 I, I the, the time I, I guess committed to do this if, if is the only downside I, I guess we need to market this town we need to I know but there are there are stuff signs out already on five and ten I mean not for every establishment I don't think I don't think we want every establishment you just need to say marijuana this way yeah right he, 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 girls <laughs> girls <laughs> Yeah, I guess not every establishment. I didn't say that. People know what they're talking about and, and and get them to study it, and maybe they maybe they have answers for the questions you have about what could be done. Right. I, I, I just I, we don't I don't see any downside either. I think we should get on board and do whatever we have to do to get that going. I mean, we've actually asked the complete streets. Uh, I don't remember which year it was going to be in for money for signs. So. There, there may be some funds there as well. Well, that was on town property, I think. Uh, you know, for it, we asked for many for signs. Yeah, okay. That's all I'm saying. Right. There's, okay, well, there's no downside. Then I, I would assume they're going to tell us where we could put signs, or what requirements there are to put signs up on, on State Route 5 and 10. Right, and they're also going to tell us yeah. where the, 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 the where we, we should put the signs for maxim, maximum visibility. And return the. I mean, these guys know what they're doing, and I actually find these signs very cool. When you go into the middle of nowhere in Vermont, and you suddenly know where these hidden gems are, and it's like it's very helpful. And it all of a sudden says, "Oh yeah, it turns out cabbage cheese is right around the corner." Okay, well, let's do that. Are these on the interstate or are they off? The interstate. Uh, this would not be on the interstate, no. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it may be that, that Mass DOT won't let us put them in the state right away, and we can go one foot off the state right away if the property property owner is willing, um, assuming it complies with zoning. I'll, I'll tell you from from someone who three years ago, the first time I came into town, I had no idea. I had no idea Chestnut Plain Road existed. Yeah. I had no idea what existed in Waitley, and, and there's such there's such a significant amount of people that come through the northern tip of Waitley off exit 24, that they have no idea that you can go left and there's some pretty cool stuff. People have no idea. I, I can't tell you how many times when I'm cutting my grass and someone says, can you tell me where Quan Quan Farm is, please? 
Yeah. And what do I live, 100 yards from it? <laughs> <laughs> so I, there's just no down, why are we taking time? Well, okay. We'll see what we get out of it. All right. Um, do we need to make a motion? As long as you agree that. And when would this start? And what's the time period for it? Does it say? Oh, 75 to 100 hours working on the project. Okay. Four times. Okay. All right. We're all calm. Have off water. Springtime. Okay. But if we think what comes out of that is not great, then we don't implement that and it's lost time, I guess. Okay. Rural Commonwealth letter, we had tabled this last time because we didn't have much time. Uh, this was a request for Rural Commonwealth to write the letter. This time I, I remember to include the letter in the packet. Um, the, the draft letter that they're asking us to send is to Sean Cronin for the Division of Local Services. And the two things that they're asking, and just uh, to refresh our memories, this is about what many communities feel are, are low payments for state-owned land in their towns. Communities that have a really high percentage of state-owned land in town, they don't collect taxes from it and they think that the, the state, what the state pays is, is pretty low. Um, so the letter that they're asking to be submitted is that um, the two asks are that Division of Local Services send single topic notifications about proposed or actual state-owned land compensation procedures to the towns, it's pretty simple, and then hold hearings related to state-owned land valuations in the central and western parts of the state where the vast majority of state-owned land is located. Um, you know, essentially, they're asking for yeah. better notification as to when these decisions are made so that they can take part in them. I've, I've thought a lot about this and asked people a lot of questions. There's no downside to signing this thing or getting involved. I'm not sure it's going to gain any traction, but you know, th those communities that have high percentages of state-owned lands, really, they're in a tough spot in terms of their revenue. Yeah. Um, well, we have some here. We have some. We don't have time, yeah. but. But I yeah. think we, I'm, I'm quite happy to sign in support of this. Yeah. Right, for again, other small towns. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but let's. Okay, yeah. I don't see any harm. Yeah, no. All right, okay. Here, a letter to be signed. All right, uh, appointment of representatives of the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. Grant Fortuna from the Board of Health asked that the. Who signs this, by the way? Is it. What's that? Is it me or is it the we entire can, board or the, the letter to. It would just be you. Okay. Well, we could just have it come from you. Yeah, that's fine. Just call me in. All right. Board of uh, Health um, asked that the phone be appointed to the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. Larry uh, Cutner as the member and Quentin Dawson as the alternate. Okay, I would nominate Larry Cutner for uh, the uh, member and uh, Quentin Dawson as the alternate for the uh, Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. Second. Do I have a second? Yeah. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, aye. Uh, I want to go back to the letter for a second. I think we should add, because this is going out and we do have uh, newly elected, though not officially in place people, we should um, send the letters to uh, Natalie oh. Blay and Joe Comerford. Which letter are you talking about? This one or the, the one to the the rural? To the rural, from the, yeah, on the rural thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, because we're going to have to be working with them in the next couple months, so let's get them up to speed. Um, okay. All right, letter from the historical commission regarding town hall and its permanent meeting location. So one of, one, one of the things that I think is important is that we establish um, a municipal presence in the building. And that uh -huh. is, um, it kind of makes sense that it would be the, the town's historical commission because it's 
one of our historic buildings, and um, I, I just think it would be a good match. Uh, essentially, what it would mean is that they're going to hold their meetings there, and they're going to have a file cabinet in the storage. Awesome. Well, so, I know it doesn't make me very popular with some people, but I, I am still a strong proponent of conversations about making the historical society a. I know you. <laughs> very loose arm of the historical commission, so we don't have precedent about about town property being used by nonprofit organizations at very reduced rates. And the whole thing goes away if they become an arm and then the historical commission can oversee or not to their heart's pleasure the society. And that would completely solve the problem. Well, I think there's, there's more to it than that. I think you got to look at whether is the town now going to own all the assets of the historical society? And are we paying all their bills? Insurance, water, uh, security? We would be paying all their bills. But they don't have a lot of, I mean, those aren't high bills. Well, I, I don't know. And well, they would be subject to open meeting laws, then? The society, they they would be, yes. One of the, at least one of the complicating factors I see is the post office. Yeah, the post office, they, they lease, yeah. The historical society owns the post office, so there would have to be a transaction that would take place there. Um, yeah. With the lease, with the post office would have to be. Let's it, so it'll take some. So paraphrase Bobby Kennedy. Let's ask how you can do things something as opposed to ask not why you can't do something. So it will take I some. I just butchered Bobby Kennedy. I get that. It will take some figuring out. So yeah. Yeah, but. Well, for tonight, could I make a motion then that uh, we identify the town hall as the permanent place for the historical commission? Okay. Well, let me. Yeah. Before we vote, let me ask, what are we going to do if other organizations want to do the same thing? Are we open up to anybody that wants to? I mean, there's one other one that meets there regularly as well. They haven't said anything or are aware, I guess, that they need to ask to do this, so, the Grange. Yeah, but that's my issue. That's not, that's not, that's separate from the Historical Commission being well, officially I, I housed. Well, is the Grange officially going to be housed there as well? They the, have Grange all the Grange is in the town department. It's not a town function, I don't think. The Grange is a separate entity. We just let them use well, it. Right. They wouldn't, they wouldn't satisfy the okay, requirement. There are, I guess kind of like the historical society. It's a, it's a separate entity, private. We're allowing historic. And I think, and I, Fred, and I think you're you're talking about the same thing I was talking about. But to Joyce's point, and it's a valid conversation that we have to have. But for the purposes of this conversation and satisfying the building needs and housing, having the commission housed, we can vote to approve the commission being housed there, and then at a later date take up sooner rather than later. I think take up the issue of. Nonprofit organizations being the the uh, primary reason to be of the building, which I think we all nobody wants to see those organizations no, not use no, the building. I know, but we need to yeah but, treat everyone equally. I, I think and it's the ones that have been using it in the past. But that's but that's sort of my point about we need to have a conversation about this. But it's not what is on the agenda here. No. But does this also mean that? This organization would have to follow the, the rules of the town hall use policy. The historic commission. Yes. The historic commission is a, 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 a town government board, so right. um, it would be expected to follow whatever regulations yep. we have in place for usage. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. They can take their okay. parties elsewhere. Okay, but as far as they have all their own trash for meetings and, and all that, public meetings and all that, and uh, uh, yeah, okay. 
All right, so is that a motion? Do we need to mo motion? Or just I did make the motion. Right. I did make no, I believe I seconded it. All those in favor? Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me? Aye. Letter from Judy Markland regarding the parking spaces reserved for the Smikes house. So currently, there are four parking spaces reserved for Smikes house residents in the rear parking lot of the town hall. Two that face, two that are directly behind Smikes house that face Melissa Cogwell's house, and then two um, that are completely on the opposite side of the parking lot that face the town hall. And the request um, was that the board consider that one of those parking spaces be released for general use. Um, I guess based on really observations that there's that there's really only two cars that are parked there now, um, and the limited um, availability of parking in the town hall lot would mean that one of those really those spaces that are never used would remain rarely used. I mean, it's probably not the most efficient use of at least one of those spaces, but I think she was talking about two. I'm, I'm fine with that, with the one caveat that occupancy of the Smikes house could change on a regular basis. And though the parking needs of current residents may not require um, well I have two thoughts may not require them to be used on a regular basis at some point down the road they might they may have multiple cars and, and what have you so I, yeah. I I think we need to allow for the residents to um, come in and ask for a, a change on this the other thought I have is and, it, and it's interestingly it goes back to the conversation we were having before about um, winter parking you know if i lived there and my parents came to visit me and my brother came to visit me for christmas um and i have a car and the person who lives you know has a car suddenly i don't have the parking i don't have four cars to park there anymore. so i think we Though the spaces aren't used on a regular basis, I think we need to make some contingency for the residents and potential guests they may have during the winter months. So would you exempt them from the winter parking ban then? I would let, you know, as long as they let, and I know it's a pain, but you know, they could let can be no. sent by our local police, is that right? correct? Then maybe that's the, the way to do that. To, uh, they can you know, let the police know if they've got a visitor coming for a week or something like that. And that, you know, that I think that can probably be handled on a pretty informal basis. Mm -hmm. And maybe we give them a... As needs arise. Right, maybe we give them a, ho you know, like the hotel gives you, you know, that you're okay to park here on your dashboard or something. I don't know. But... Um, but I, I do think we need to be conscious of the residents' needs. So how does that proceed, yeah. Brian? For the, are, are we jumping to the parking ban? Well, I, we I mean, I, I, I think we're, like, how do we need to react to uh, Judy's letter? Do we need to um, basically vote to release those spaces? Um, you know, with the with the caveat that you know uh, short term, uh, you know extra parking needs must be able to be taken care of on an informal basis. I mean, like, what how do we, how do we need to respond to Judy's letter so, at this point? So the request is that um, I, mean, I mean, her request is that I believe is that those two spaces be opened up. Um, mm -hmm. So. Well, then I guess I would two or one or, or none. I don't agree with two because I've seen three vehicles parked there many times, evenings especially. Two during the daytime, yes, but evenings I've seen three numerous times. 
Yeah. And I, I don't think we, we should go down to two. So three, I, I guess I, I would I would support going down to three right now because that, that's what I, I have reason to believe there's three people parked there, three vehicles parking there right now. If that changes in the future, or if they have more people there, I, I guess we could bring back the, the fourth spot. I, I'm okay with three, but I still want to have the some language about winter parking and overnight guests of of the house. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Well, that good idea. Kind of, you're going to get into the the management agreement that we have with the Franklin County Housing Authority on that, and yeah. it it could be addressed in there. It, it may not, but. The, the other thing, and I'm not sure where we stand on this, Brian, is, is the maintenance of that parking lot. I think up to now, they, they've been plowing it and charging us a, a share of their plowing expenses for doing that. Now, I don't know if it's on uh, this year's plowing uh, agenda for, for Keith to, to plow all of that, even for the Smike's house or not. Yeah, we're having. We have we trying to agreement on there. Some or, discussions about that. Or mowing the lawn around there. I don't know who's doing that now. Whether I, I think they did. Smike's house, uh, Franklin County Housing Authority hired somebody to mow lawn this summer. Around the building. Now Keith is. We didn't have lawn, but well, he mowed the, around the town hall, I guess, before, but not between the two. Maybe there wasn't lawn there, but. I, I don't see how the management agreement no. it impacts well, overnight parking. No, it doesn't. But but with Joyce's concern about uh, how many we allow, I, I, I guess they are, and, and overnight guests and all that, I, there may be some language in there on that. That's what I'm saying. Well, then I think we can just leave it to these guys to figure out the administrative logistics of making sure that these guys don't get caught short with parking when they have people over for Thanksgiving yeah. dinner. Right. right. So, so Joyce, to answer right. your question, should we remove one of those reserved for Smike's house parking signs? I guess that's Me? the question. I guess it's a question yeah, yeah, for yeah, all three of them. Wondering what do we have to do to act on on this Jimmy She's requested two signs come down, um, and it sounds like we don't necessarily have. Uh, the information as to like what would happen if they have a guest and use a non Mike's house parking place in that lot, uh, and, I, and I don't really know what happens then. I, so, I, yeah, I think um, during the winter parking ban, we should we should the board should say some language that talks about okay. excluding. Mike's house residents and their guests parking in the town hall lot. So I'm going to make a motion uh, that or the we rear town hall lot or something like that. I'm going to make a motion that we re that we remove one of the two signs um, reserving parking for Smike's house residents. Second. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Me. Aye. Um. We've always voted to implement the winter parking ban. I can't imagine this is going to be a long, drawn-out conversation. Um, I would like to make a motion to vote to implement the winter parking ban um, with the amendment that uh, Brian and staff figure out the administrative logistics of making the giving the smikes house residents, guests of those residents, uh, able to park in that lot uh, in certain areas during during the winter months at, without fear of being, what do they, what happens here, they get ticketed or towed or? Towed. Is it towed? And ticketed, you know, yeah. both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because that, you know, that would be my motion. Okay, I'll second that. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me? Aye. So, so just so people know what the winter parking ban is, it's no parking on a, no parking on any public streets 
four municipal parking lots from 12 midnight until 7 a.m. Between today's, well, due to, uh, let's do today's date because that's when you voted it, until April 15th, 2019, unless sooner lifted by the select board. So, we'll park okay. on the streets overnight. Starting right away. Or the municipal parking lots. Uh, and of course, if we have a special town meeting here that goes until 1 o'clock in the morning, we will make an exception to it. We will tell people. Call me in. I knew you'd be here, Dan. Town Minister Update, Brian, please. We'll do a couple of them. Um, we had the HVAC work done to this building, which was the installation of a, um, it's getting late. Um, expansion tank, thanks, Amy. Expansion tank that seems to have solved the issues that we have with uh, pressure in the uh, system. Everybody have, has already noticed the uh, the great new uh, roof on the highway garage that has been reshingled, well stripped and reshingled, um, and we'll, that'll be uh, painted at some point. Good bet, building 50 years more life. Yeah. <laughs> 50 years and, lifetime, you say lifetime shingles? Yeah, right, right, right. And uh, what will end with that, um, the closing on the Blue School, well, with Frontier and O'Bear Construction and our adjacent lot has been pushed back to uh, December 31st, so that Frontier has additional time to vacate the building. That's the word that was passed along to me. So um, we shouldn't see anything happening there for a little while. Okay. Items not anticipated? I don't have any. Right. All right. One, one quick thing, kind of related to the historical society in a, in a town hall. Uh, I remember seeing something back around the early 90s where we made some motion either at a town meeting or at a select board meeting allowing the Historical Society to occupy space in the center school. There was some action made either by this board or town meeting. And I think if you're looking at combining them with, with historical commission or whatever, I, I, and I don't know if that's addressed in the language on the utility rates that we charge to electric or not. Uh, I think there should be some agreement that signed by this board allowing them to be there in addition to paying the utilities. I think to, to formalize that, to let everybody know that it's been agreed upon that they're there. And maybe that's regardless of whether they're part of the historic commission or not. Well, that, my, my point is that the president said it. Yes, but, and I don't, you, Odelia probably would know when they first came, or, came into the center school. I know, when did we leave offices there? 92, 95? Uh, I don't know. Uh, somewhere in there. I, I would, uh, I would guess it was at a town meeting. Because I saw it in a town report somewhere. You might just talk to, to Adelia. I thought she was, uh, last time you guys discussed this, before her move, she said she'd like to discuss yeah, it she further. Yeah, she did. She's been very, very receptive. Yeah, yeah, so I, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Whether no. you combine the commission and the historical society, I'm not sure. I know Hatfield took over their historical yeah. society. I don't know it, about it, the commission it, versus society. It, it's, it's a conversation that needs to take place, and, and maybe it's a subcommittee. I, I don't know, but it's, it, is, it is a conversation that has to take place between somebody and somebody else and then it needs to come before this board to discuss the solutions that they've that they come up with so um brian did you get any update for me on the traffic light i don't but amy does yes i spoke to jay at mass dot and how is jay jay is good um so it used to be on a trip yeah and the wires got cut and they're waiting for the piece of equipment to come in be able to fix it so it is on months. a i know so it is on how a timer. long does it take to have a piece of he's wire? aware of the problem there has been multiple phone calls and they are working on it i did not push him more for more information i can no i'm okay. just but he didn't give me an estimated time or anything of when that piece of equipment was going to be in 
but they are aware of the problem. And All right, I'm going to keep asking you now. And they thank you for your patience. <laughs> I'm going to keep asking. It's very nice on the phone. And how about this thing that the DOTs, they're going to resurface parts of Waverly, and, and, but they say they're going to start at uh, Old State Road. Yeah. 500 feet south of there, I think. But the one by the diner or yeah. the one by the Sugarloaf shops? South of the diner. By the, uh, the diner. Hey, there's a public hearing scheduled for November 13th. 13th. But is that going to mess up the truck traffic flow that we've mandated? Deerfield Town Hall, 7 that, p.m. That's going to mess up the truck traffic flow that we've mandated. Well, I don't think they're resurfacing no. Old State Road. I think they're using that as a reference. Yeah. Right? Yeah. For whatever reason. Oh. Yeah. yeah. No, they're just doing the main line. Uh, yeah, maybe oh, some oh, driveway oh, entrances, oh, whatever oh, they're, they're doing that. It's not. But it's the one on the south of the diner. Yeah. Yeah, and it's. Okay. I have a question, future meetings here, we're, we're running into a day after Christmas yeah. if we follow the schedule. Uh, I'm proposing, so our next meeting is, is in three weeks from today. If we go two weeks and, and then, which would be the 21st, the day before Thanksgiving, and then we could go two weeks after that would be the, the 5th and the 19th of December. Otherwise you're gonna you're going to go whole month of December with just one meeting. Yeah, but so do we want to do that? December's slow anyway, and and I'll I'll settle it easily. But I am going to be geographically very indisposed on the day before Thanksgiving. Okay, well I just throw it out. Okay, or another time that week if we want. I will wanted. be geographically indisposed. If we want something else, the, the, I will be geographically indisposed that entire. So then we're probably only going to have one meeting in December. Yeah, and I don't see a downside yeah. of that. First. Well, okay, yeah. well, I don't know if we, if, you know, we, we wanted to change our schedule for that or not. And depending on what happens with special town meeting dates, it, things may need to fluctuate a little bit. Yeah. Presumably so, we want to kind of stack those together if we can for your convenience. Yeah. So that may not be until January then. What's that? Special town meeting. Oh, I think. I would hope it would be. Much well, if we decide that. on December fifth, well, two weeks is the nineteenth, I guess, right? Would be the soonest. Yeah, it may very well be if the two of you are willing, we may to sign the special town meeting warrant. It may be if you're willing, it may be a quick five minute sign the special town meeting warrant meeting if that helps us. Okay, well we can cross that bridge when we come to it rather than airing our travel plans on, in public. So where are you going? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Good. Right. Good night.